Mr. Harker, I'm glad that you've arrived safely. Count Dracula. I am Dracula, and I welcome you to my house. I must apologize for not being here to greet you personally, but I trust that you have found everything you needed. Well, thank you, sir. It was most thoughtful. It was the least that I could do after such a journey. I thought after we'd done the first one, we'd have a complete reshuffle. It was, uh, and I was uh, rather surprised when I was told that I, I, I had to have <laughs> the same people. Uh, as a matter of fact, as it worked out, it couldn't have been better. Um, uh, as I say, Cushing had been a star, and uh, I was delighted to have him Frank Sun. I thought he was excellent in, in Dracula. And really, you couldn't have found a better person than Chris Lee for Dracula, I don't think, anywhere. He was quite original, I think, making him a very presentable, quite, quite sexually attractive, not to me, but to quite sexually attractive uh, 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 actor, instead of this uh, rather florid, puffy-faced gentleman, the one associated with... Uh, decided in my own mind from reading the book that the author had presented this character as a romantic, erotic, heroic, fascinating figure, highly dangerous, savage, but above all, which I think is the most important thing when you're playing characters of this kind, tormented, agonized, sad. What a ghastly fate to be immortal. Frankenstein, that, that was comparatively easy because there is a chap who was really right ahead of his time. I mean, I think I was the first to start transplanting uh, human organs. That uh, the South African doctor did a very much better job of it at about 1968. Uh, so therefore, um, that 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 character wasn't so difficult. The one I found just a little bit more difficult was Van Helsing because in the book by um, Bram Stoker, he's described as a very old, little, withered uh, uh, man who speaks almost double Dutch. And uh, this was going back, what, nearly 25 years when um, I was younger and prettier, if that's possible. <laughs> and so when I was off the bar, I said, well, instead of making me up, I think we'd better play it as myself. I think so they agreed to that. Count Dracula the propagator of this unspeakable evil has disappeared. He must be found and destroyed. The one thing that Dracula didn't like uh, was uh, crucifix. Um, and there were so many times I had to use one that uh, in the end, I thought it would become ludicrous. I was rather like a, a traveling salesman in crucifix eye. So um, right at the end of the picture, uh, Van Helsing forces Dracula into a shaft of sunlight by rushing along, uh, pulling some curtains now, uh, and whereupon he withdrew yet another crucifix out of his pocket. I said, really, uh, could we not have something different? And I suggested that they had uh, the long refractory tra table, um, a candlestick at each end, and I could rush along like a mad thing, leap on the table again, and grab one, candlestick, rush to the other and grab the other, then boing them together. And it worked, because it made quite a jolly good climax. And I believe they used the end of that picture in the second Dracula, which uh, I wasn't in for some reason. Another important member of the Hammer production team was James Carrera's son, Michael. It was like a dam bursting. There was all over the world a complete uh, readiness for that uh, type of entertainment to be revitalized. And of course, coming back in color, it just caused a sensation. Too sensational for the critics, who reacted with almost universal contempt. But the public queued up all over the world, and Hammer became the leading producers of traditional horror. They wasted little time in bringing the formidable Victor Frankenstein back from the dead. In the year 1810, I, Baron Frankenstein, was sentenced to death on the guillotine. But I have escaped the guillotine, and I shall avenge the death of my creation. They 
asked me to do a second Frankenstein, for which there was no story. I had to come up with the original story. And I tried to think of something which really frightened me, upset me personally, revolted me, actually. And that's when I wrote the business about the monster that created et people, because I have a fear of being eaten by anybody. <laughs> At Bray, by the River Thames, a converted country house called Down Place became the centre of production for Hammer. Among the team they assembled, there was Jimmy Sangster, who began as a production assistant. Originally, when I went to Bray, in fact, we were making pictures next door at a place called Oakley Court. And we needed more space, so we went next door to Bray, which was just then just a house. And we started using a room at a time. And then we built the stages. And it was always a very good atmosphere. I mean, it really was a family. I mean, everybody was working there sort of permanently, which, let's face it, is very unusual in this industry for anybody to be working permanently at anything. And we just, we, I mean, we were, this is before we did the Gothic, started doing the Gothic horror films. We were doing eight or nine pictures a year. Small crew. Uh, and it, it, it was it was a, it was a good time, a good time. This unique film shows a day at Bray Studios in 1952, with the staff bus arriving from London. The film was Man Trap, a murder mystery typical of Hammer's output of the time. Though working within very tight budgets, Hammer succeeded in disguising their limited resources and creating a distinctive look to their films. For this. They relied on a regular team of technicians, such as camera operator Len Harris, James Needs, editor on all the major Hammer films and responsible for many of the classic shock sequences. Producer Michael Carreras chats to the star of the film, Hollywood actor Paul Henry, Terence Fisher, the most respected of Hammer directors and the man who was to put Frankenstein and Dracula back on the screen. Everybody who worked for Hammer loved what they were doing. Or quite honestly, the, 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 often the situation was such, you know, we, worked, we didn't have enormous budgets, we worked very long hours in very cramped facilities. It was only a big old house. And we did remarkable things. If you look at the old film, the old horror films that were made in that old house, Quite remarkable. You'd think we'd shot in at MGM or Pinewood. China! courtyard, where Dracula made his exit, is still the main entrance to Bray Studios. Every inch of space was used, as shown by this scene from Dick Turpin, Highwayman, made in 1956. <laughs> Hazel Court, lead actress in The Curse of Frankenstein, is among the images of the 50s, still on the wall of the carpenter's shop. Hammer left in 1967, but fantasy worlds are still created here, mainly for commercials and rock videos. The original generator room, though still in use, is curiously reminiscent of Frankenstein's laboratory. 